Hello and welcome to Ross and Miko. This is Ross. Hello. And I'm Miko. Hello. And we like Disney movies. We like other things too. Like that's not like our only th- Like I like basketball and rum. And Ross likes Star Trek and uh, <laughs> socks without holes in them, I'd imagine. But yeah, we also like Disney movies. In fact, we like them so much that we do a regular podcast looking at all the fun facts and trivia, all the good stuff that you didn't know you didn't know. You know, we also make drinking rules uh, for watching those movies um, and whoop. sometimes make a fool of ourselves. But it's let's, uh, over. you know, brush all over on. that for now. All because wrong. maybe you're here because you don't have time for a full podcast, right? Like, yeah, you're busy people. So you got stuff to do. So here is a quick recap of all the things you didn't know about our most recent episode, The Emperor's New Groove. And hey, if after this you do want to hear the full podcast, it's available for streaming or download at all your favourite podcasty places. There's even a full video version right here on this very channel, clicking the buttons, you know what to do. Let's get our groove on. The Emperor's New Groove was released in the year 2000, but it actually took six years to make and underwent a whole bunch of changes in that time. Initially, it was going to be called Kingdom of the Sun. They got Roger Allers in to direct it, who of course directed The Lion King, and it was going to be like a Prince and the Pauper kind of thing. Owen Wilson was going to voice Pacha and look exactly like Cusco, but anyway, they scrapped all of that. Oh, and Yzma had a sidekick called Huaka, who looked really, really cool, and unfortunately wasn't in the final version. Or was he? It was. It was. It was a candlestick holder. Sting was hired to do the soundtrack for the movie and he made six songs but only two were used, including which Sting flat out refused to sing, saying that they needed to get someone younger in to sing the song. So they got famously young Tom Jones. Miko, hi, hi, hi. Sorry to interrupt. Um, just making sure. You you talk a lot. Um, I... Can you do it faster, please? People have things to do. Probably. Um, um, Tick tock. Time is um, 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 oh, uh, Chica, Patch's wife, was the first animated pregnant character in Disney history. She was also voiced by Wendy Malick, Wrap who was absolutely amazing. It it. Everyone wants to go home. Uh, while Emperor's New Groove was on hold, a bunch of animators led by Eric Goldberg actually worked on a separate short film, and Disney liked it so much that they wanted to use it, so it became Rhapsody in Blue in Fantasia 2000. Mm. When the bridge falls, it briefly spells it. Damn! It's a, it's a, it's a play on words. Uh, Cusco gets turned into three animals throughout the duration of the film a llama, a parrot, and a Will, which just so happened to be three of the toys that we see him playing with as a kid! Back, 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 back. It talks. Nailed it. Nailed it. If you want to check out the full version of the podcast, you can just search for Happily Ever After with Ross and Miko. And if you enjoyed this lightning recap thing, please leave a comment to let us know and uh, we'll, we'll make it a regular hoo-ha. A regular hoo-ha. Uh, but yeah, thanks as always for watching. This has been Ross and Miko. This has been Ross. Goodbye. And I've been Miko. Goodbye. I will continue to be so, and we'll see you soon. Beat it up. Come on. We all want to go for a sandwich. He talks like a crab. Talks with his hands. Farewell. Not going anywhere. It's it, This is it. This is my life now.